When we hit our brake pedal and our car jerks to one side or the other, starts making loud screeching noises or plane just doesn't stop, it takes a lot of the joy out of driving, doesn't it? And it's not safe. Rick Higgins with you here again. Here at Bug Me Video, we want all of our Volkswagen friends to be safe in their Volkswagens and especially to be able to enjoy driving them. So we've put together a video now that covers the complete brake system in your Volkswagen. Now before we actually start working on the car, we're going to go over some of the main components that make up the braking system. At the heart of our brake system is a master cylinder, and this is what pumps the brake fluid out to all four wheels. Now, this is the older system here, it's a single circuit. Everything's pumped out one end of the master cylinder here. This is what's common on the bugs up until 1967. Then in 1967, they came out with a dual circuit system, which is much better. The front half of the master cylinder, which is actually a master cylinder of its own, feeds the front wheels, and the back half, which is another master cylinder, feeds the rear of the car. So you actually got two master cylinders in one with this. And the advantage of that is, if you'd ever happen to blow a brake line, a brake in one of them, or one of these hoses would blow out, or a wheel cylinder, on either end of the car, you've still got the brakes on the the other end of the car, whereas in the old system, you blow a brake line or anything like that, you've lost all your brakes. Another disadvantage is the old can system. go up and down without having to worry about bending a metal line. Now these things, though, can really be a problem. Because what happens is when they're new, the hole running through here is about the same size as the one in the metal lines, but as they get older, the rubber shrinks up and actually cuts off the circulation through on there like this. You can see that one groove is deeper. That's the groove that goes against the arm. One thing you have to watch out for on this, on one side of the car, the spring is sitting in a little cupped out place here. And it looks like that was made for that spring, but actually it's just made to make that arm stronger. On the other side of the car, the spring will be sitting against this side of it. So don't think you've got the wrong piece or got your spring upside down. You ever wonder what those two little holes were on the edge of your hubcap? Well, in the original Volkswagens, they had a little tool that looked like this. It had two little prongs on it there, and they go down in those holes. And then the handle for your jack goes up through there. And that was used to pop the hubcap off so you don't scratch your wheel all up. And that's really the proper way to take your hubcap off. The rear brake drums on all the Volkswagen Bugs is held on with a 36-millimeter nut just like on the flywheel, and it's just as tight as on the flywheel. Actually, it's held on with about 217 foot-pounds of torque, but it takes a lot more than that to take it loose. It's got a cotter shoe. There's our other brake shoe. There's our wheel cylinder. There's our little star adjusters down here. There's the emergency brake arm, and there's our emergency brake cable. Now, the first thing we're going to examine is the length of one and a quarter pipe, put a cap on the end of it, and put one of these post fixtures. On the other end of it, it's real flat right here, and you can make yourself a seal installer. You just slip it over the end of the axle like that. Now, it works a little better if you use a heavier hammer. You just smack it a couple of times like that, and it puts the seal in there real nice and flat, or at least it should. Your hammer will work, though. Okay, now we're ready to put the spacer back in there. Now, you can see the spacer is beveled on the inside here. That's just the part that goes... The bevel facing is here. And then make sure our little oil hole goes down. And we just slide that over the axle. And right into place. And then we just start a couple of our bolts. Okay, the first thing we'll do is take our fitting loose here. Now use your 11 millimeter line wrench. And wrench. See this wrench? Put it on the line. And then our 11 millimeter line wrench on the fitting on here. Put it right back into place again. You could pick up a new one of these at the part store if they have one, but this old one here is in good shape. And it's back on there again. Now we take and put our and we'll jack the car up. Now when we jack up the front of the car, we just want to put our jack right under the middle of the front 
torsion bars right here, right at the very front of the chassis. Of course, if you've got a Super Beetle, you jack it up and just about... Now, here's something else I'd like to draw your attention to. That's this brake line that runs the full length of the car. That big long line we showed you earlier. It comes in under the pedals here. And then it runs along the side of the tunnel. There's a couple of clips that hold it down. And water will settle in along the floorboard right here. And it'll rust holes in that brake line. Now, you can see there's a spot right here. And we'll go on down a little bit. Now you can see the calipers held on by two bolts right here with 17 millimeter heads on them. And they have a little locking tab that has to be bent down so you can get that out of there. I'll see if I can get that bent back without getting in the way here too much. As we get in here you can see there's a completely different arrangement. There's a little pinch nut that goes on here and it has a socket head screw, the six millimeter Allen type socket right there. So you can take your six millimeter Allen wrench and then that we'll up. put our drum in some mineral spirits and we'll clean that all out real good in here. Get all the shavings out and we'll start all fresh with new grease in there. At the same time, we want to take all of our old bearings and our hardware Put them in here in the mineral spirit. Now we've got our brake drum all cleaned up. And our bearings are all cleaned up. Let's examine them. Now the brake drum has two bearings. It has one on the outside and one on the inside. Now this bearing here is a ball bearing in the older cars and it's in three pieces. It has what's called right a, here when this brake. bearing starts having trouble, when it starts wearing out, it'll start having bad places in it. See these lines that are in there? That's where the metal's breaking down. Eventually, this will get wider and wider, and this bearing will get rougher and rougher. But this bearing is already bad, and it's already making noise. We heard that before. So we'll have to replace now that. Now we're ready to put in our new wheel bearings. Now we're going to replace our ball bearings with the newer style roller bearings. The tapered roller bearings, you can see these are much heavier than the ball bearings. They last a lot longer because there's a lot more bearing surface. And these are the kind of bearings you'll find in 67 on up. And it's a good idea to get some grease and pack it back up against the back side of that race down inside the drum. You don't want too much down inside the drum. I'll just end up running out on the brakes, but in the middle there, but plenty in there. Now a little bit more. Back side of it now there. we're going to start bleeding our brakes with the right rear wheel. It's the one farthest away from the master cylinder. And what we're doing here now is getting all the air out of the lines. We've replaced some of the rubber lines, we've replaced the wheel cylinders, and they have a certain amount of air in them that's got to come out of there because we can't have air in with that hydraulic fluid or our pedal will be real mushy. So to have a real firm pedal, we want to get all the air out. Now as we pump the master cylinder in the front, the fluid will rush toward all the outgoing lines and the air will come back to the wheel cylinders. And remember the wheel cylinder had a little bleeder on the top of it. All the air will go to the top and so when we open the bleeders with a little bit of pressure on the line, the air should come out of there. And we finally see no more air coming out and just fluid, then we'll know we've got all the air out in that part. Now usually this is a two-man... Okay, and our brake job is done. One step closer to having this 63 ragtop back alive again. Well, in the last hour or so now, you've learned how to replace your master cylinder, your brake lines, your wheel cylinders, your brake shoes, your front wheel bearings, and even your rear axle grease seals. So if you apply those things now to your bug, your bug's going to be a lot more fun to drive, and it's going to be a lot safer for both you and others as well.